Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the XFL Show. I am Old Man Troy, joined by the wonderful youngster Kevin Cunningham, a.k.a. Kit Cunny on Twitter. What's shaking today, my friend? Not too much. Not too much. I, I know we've got limited time on this show. We always keep this show short. Um, it's been a few weeks since we've done this. Not going to lie there, but we have done a number of shows. Check us out at thegruelingtruth.net. You can find all the shows that we have done to this point um, by clicking on the XFL show. Uh, Troy and I do. We would, uh, yeah, uh, all of our shows well, are on the It's the, kind the, of like the Big Ten net. show we just finished recording, youngster. There, yeah. We were going to do some stuff with the XFL, yep. but there's really nothing going on. I mean, we can talk about potential cities. We can talk about rule changes. We can do all these things. Which we have. (laughs) And which we have, and we are going to continue it. But I also have to let the listeners of this show know, if you don't listen to our main show, we do more than one show. You can follow us on Twitter at YoungsterOldMan. We do have, and and I'm not like sitting here saying we're extremely busy, but you know what, Youngster, we are. We, We do a number of shows that take up, ample time but we have no problem doing the xfl show every week and that's why it's quick it's short it's to the point and finally some xfl news that makes it hey we've got to get it it's a priority fit it in our schedule get her done get her done that's what i'm gonna say the xfl has named the commissioner oliver luck the new xfl commissioner turn it back over to you talk about his salary, talk about a few things that he said. I watched a little bit of, you know, online. Hey, I'm impressed. McMahon, I think, has a good a good hold on this. He wants this to work, but I'm going to turn it back over to you, youngster. Yeah, I, I don't know 100% extensive background knowledge of him. I'm just reading some stuff right now. Like, I know he was the West Virginia athletic director. Uh, I know in 2013 he was a member. There are 13 members um, chosen for the college football playoff committee. Basically, you're getting a former NCAA guy here. Um, And for a lot of people, that'll be like, oh, my God, that's terrible. (laughs) Because all you hear with the NCAA is how terrible the NCAA handles certain issues. Um, and, And I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think the NCAA gets bashed more than they should. I don't think the NCAA is perfect by any means. Um, But I think the NCAA gets bashed because it's easy to bash the NCAA. It's easy to bash the NFL commissioner. It's easy to bash the NBA commissioner. It's easy to bash the president of the United States. It's easy to bash anyone who's overseeing a ton of stuff in general, whether it's sports, whether it's this country, whatever. Um, If you're making that many high-profile decisions, you're going to have millions of people thinking that whatever decision you decide on something, it's going to be garbage. That, that's just the fact. If Oliver Luck says that we're going to require our players to stand for the national anthem, you're going to get a ton of people in support of that. You're going to get a ton of people saying that's dumb. That's just the way it is because you're making a huge decision for a league that's pumping millions of dollars into this league just to luck, which I'll get into um, as well. But we've only got like <laughs> 10 minutes or so left on the show. Uh, that's how quick we want to keep these shows. But so Oliver Luck has also said that he wants to, he's requiring players to stand for the national anthem. And that's a decision. That's, again, some people will love him for it, hate him for it, whatever. Here's but, the thing, youngster. He's yeah. the boss. Right. He's the boss because this is a separate business entity and the league owns all the teams. Yeah. So you have to listen to what the boss says. Yep. So he, he came out and said it. Hey, here's the rule. This is the rule. If you want to play in the XFL, this is what you will do. And we talked about it on one of our first shows. I, the league owns the teams. Yep. So you have to listen to your employer. And if you don't like it, don't play. That's as simple as that. I'm, I'm okay with Oliver Luck coming out and stating this right now. He's not, he's not throwing anything under the blanket. He's saying, look, here it is. And I think part of it is, you know, he wants people to know I'm the boss. You are actually playing football for me. And I like this choice. You mentioned the NCAA. Well, didn't we at one time say, youngster, that the XFL, if they play their cards right, 
could actually turn into a feeder program for the NFL. Yeah. And there would be nothing wrong with that. I know it's I know it's another professional football league. But let's get real. The XFL is never going to overtake the NFL. And if you're one of those people that is out there on Twitter saying, oh, goodbye, death to the NFL, I would have to say you're probably wrong. A reason, Troy, a reason the NFL is going to fail is because if the NFL fails, it's honestly going to be because of what? Concussions, probably. Injuries, safety. But then the XFL is going to fail, too. That's exactly my point. <laughs> so the XFL is not the, the XFL can do certain things better than the NFL, maybe a, a couple of things here and there, uh, and the NFL will look at it over the off season and probably say, "Hey, the XFL is smart for this, you know, rule change on the kickoff that's being smarter than what we're doing right now. Let's do that." And because it's the NFL and because how established it is, I don't want to say that the top company of say Coke can't be overtaken, but there's a reason why Coke is still Coke. <laughs> there's a reason why McDonald's is still McDonald's. I mean, for someone to just come up out of nowhere and say, hey, here's a new football league. Hey, here's a new uh, international restaurant. It's going to overtake McDonald's in, what, five years? Uh, what, are you nuts? <laughs> I mean, you have to spend an eternity to try and get up to McDonald's level, to get up to Coke's level, to get up to the NFL's level. Uh, that's what the XFL is doing. I mean, this is a league that had one season before in, what, 2001, and it failed. That's it. Done. Over. Hey, we're trying it again, you know, 19 years later. Okay. You think you're close to the NFL? Of course not. And we know that we're doing an XFL podcast. We don't even do an NFL podcast just based on the NFL. We don't. We want the XFL to succeed, but you have to have realistic expectations that the XFL is not getting the best players coming out of college football. They're just not. So maybe you can and I think we talked about this on a show previous, which, again, check out on thegrillytruth.net. Check out our Twitter handle, at Man. We talked about, hey, the NFL has it so that you have to play at least two years of college football. You have to be at least a junior or a redshirt sophomore, play two years of college football going in, or, or three years of college football, sorry. Um, and then you're eligible for the NFL. If the XFL lowers that and says, you only have to play one year of college football or two, or none. Hey, okay, here you are. You're the XFL. You're doing something different from the NFL. You can stand out that way. I think that's a very viable option rather than just head to shoulders competing with the, with the NFL and exactly what they do. And so having now, your... now you got to get me to chime in here, youngster. You, you, yeah. you had to bring up a point. So let's say the XFL does this and says, hey, you can come right out of high school if you're good enough. If you're yeah. good enough to make this team, here's the bottom line. When they're eligible for the NFL, where are they going if they're right. that good? Right. They'll use the XFL as a feeder team to, to meet the qualifications. I don't see the NFL ever changing, even if the XFL says, you, you can come anytime. You've got to be 18, 18 years old, legal to work in uh, whatever, legal to work in the United States, blah, 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 whatever it is. But at some point, they're going to bolt to the NFL if they're that good. Even if the money's there, I mean, the NFL, the allure of the NFL and all of those things, it's there. But I know we were talking about Oliver Luck, Kevin, and I mentioned I like this appointment. And I do for the fact that he's been an athletic director in the NCAA. The yeah. contacts that he has within the NCAA will help the XFL. He can spread the goodwill of the XFL. And and or Andrew, there we go. I was going to call him Andrew Luck. Oliver <laughs> Luck is a good businessman. He ran an athletic department. You have to have business savvy to be an athletic director. I like this appointment. And if he has a focus and a vision with McMahon, I think the league can at least succeed. Again, I don't think it's ever overtaking the NFL. But will it, can it succeed? Yes. You and I have talked about this. But they've got to do some things that are different than the NFL. They're playing at a different time of the year. But I really believe at some point, you're, I don't even have to say yet you partner with the NFL, but you work in conjunction with the NFL. At some point, if that happens, then you will have – 
almost like minor league baseball. And it's still professional. When you play triple A baseball, you're still a professional, even though it's minor leagues. It's just not the big club. You right. look at English soccer, Kevin, you and I are big soccer fans. How many minor teams do all the big clubs have? You're still a professional. You're still in the club. Yep. You have to work your way up. So that to me, there would be nothing wrong if the XFL was a feeder league for the NFL. Nothing at all. I would probably, actually, if that was the case, I may be more intrigued to watch it I mean, because you know that these guys are going to go out and play hard because they're auditioning. They're auditioning for the big clubs. And maybe eventually, I'm not saying you get to 32 teams, but you, maybe you do get to 32 teams. And every team has a feeder program that is their team. They're, these are players that we signed, that we drafted. Guess what? You're not good enough to play in the big team. We're going to send you to the XFL, and that's where you're going to play. Somebody gets hurt, we're going to call you up. I, right. I mean, I think that's a great idea. I'm going to turn it back over to you. I know we don't want to spend a lot of time here today, so I'll let you give a last point, and then we'll wrap her up. Yeah, no, I, I think that's great, and I think we could do, uh, well, we could easily talk 15 minutes just on that point alone, um, but I think that'd be great as well. Um, I also, this goes to show the, the power of the NFL. Every single week of the NFL season, including the playoffs, including the NFL draft, um, stuff like that, I talk each week. I have a segment in a Montreal radio station. I call in and I talk for 15 minutes about the NFL when the NFL season is going on. Montreal's top sports station. I go in and talk. That's Montreal. That's Canada. They have the CFL. They care about the CFL, but they still want to have someone who understands the NFL and talk about the NFL every single week of the NFL season. I mean, they care about the NFL. And to be a feeder league for the NFL, I think that works just fine. I think, you, like you said, you would tune in. I would as well. I mean, if you've got, um, what's his name? I can't, Jadavion Clowney. Jadavion Clowney basically didn't want to play his third year at South Carolina because he knew coming out as a sophomore, he would have been the number one pick in the draft. He couldn't because of the NFL's rules that you had to play at least three years. You had to be at least three years out of high school, I should say. That's how I should put it. Three years out of high school. Jadavion Clowney basically, basically, sat out his junior year at South Carolina. He played some games. He didn't play every single game. He didn't play every single snap, but he could have went 100%. He didn't do it because he knew he didn't have to. Uh, if, you're, if you're the XFL and you're able to pay this guy, you know, a million dollars, whatever, for one year, yeah, he's going to play. <laughs> um, so I, I, I would get that, and that would make sense to me, at least if you're a feeder league for the NFL. Makes perfect sense to me. It works in every other sport. It's starting to work more so in basketball now. They were late to adopt it, but even the basketball, the Dreamer League, as you call it, Troy, the G League, I mean, those guys make legitimate money, and, you know, they are part of an organization. Like the Boston Celtics has a team in Maine uh, that's, you know, they're, uh, the Celtics are the overarching team for that team in Maine. And they've got guys on their summer league team that don't make it, but they send them to Maine and they play in the G League. Uh, I think the XFL could work the same way. The last thing I wanted to mention, if we're keeping this under 20 minutes, uh, which we have done successfully every podcast so far for the XFL show, I want to keep that going. Oliver Luck, a report that he's getting $20 million guaranteed from the XFL over, here's, here's the caveat to it, over a number of years. And I say a number of years because that, that's what it is. It's a number of years. It's multiple years. The, uh, the actual number of years is not known. But, but it's the XFL. I mean, is this over a 10-year stretch? I don't think you can assume the XFL is going to make it 10 years because it only made it one last time. But it's known, the report is, that he is getting $20 million guaranteed. Is that over three years? Is that two? Is that one? I'm assuming it's not five, seven, ten, because last time <laughs> the XFL was out, it took one. But so if you're willing to pay your commissioner guaranteed $20 million, I think that speaks to how the players are going to get paid. I think it's going to be more worth your while to keep playing football in the XFL than it is to give up in football 
and do a career doing whatever you studied, not necessarily that, you know, going to college and actually getting an education and doing something in your field is a bad thing. We could see Hornibrook from Wisconsin maybe in the XFL. There you go. Someone competent, someone who's not Dan Marino, John Elway, but still a competent quarterback who you can watch and develop. And if he gets to 27 years old and he's furthering his skills and the team wants to bring him up as a backup in the NFL, could perfectly see it. If you're Johnny Manziel and you want to go to a different league, you don't have to go to Edmonton or Montreal or Vancouver. You can go to the XFL and play in Houston, let's just say. And then the Dallas Cowboys are right there watching you just like you wanted all along to be a Dallas Cowboy. If you're Johnny Manziel, it, just saying, <laughs> to be a feeder league um, and you're paying your commissioner a guaranteed $20 million, I think that's a great sign for the XFL that means you're going to pay your players a decent amount. It's not going to be NFL money, obviously, but it's going to be a decent amount. And I think it's going to be very comparable to what the CFL plays as players. And if you're able to stay in the States and have teams, executives, personnel from the NFL easily watch your games more often since they're in the States, I think it makes sense. I think it's a good sign for the NFL or the NFL, the XFL to be paying your commissioner, Oliver Luck, a guaranteed $20 million over multiple years. That's the report. But it's $20 million guaranteed. So I think it bodes well for the XFL's future. I'll leave it Yeah, what, what it shows me, Kevin, is that they're all in, that, that yeah. they want it to succeed, which yeah. is a good thing. You know, they're not coming in half-heartedly. And like I said, I think they've got a good guy. I think Luck's going to do well. And it's just going to come down to well, how are you trying to position yourself? Right. And I will say this on this podcast today, and we'll, we'll, you know, we're going to extend this next week. We're going to do an XFL show next week, too, to talk more in depth about how a feeder program could work. But if you're going to position yourself that you're going to try to knock off the NFL, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. And I think McMahon and Luck are very smart men. And I think McMahon learned a lot from failing the first time around. A lot of gimmicks. A lot of things to try and make it, ooh, we're going to make it fun. You and I talked about it. We don't want it to be fun. We want it to be football, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I, I could care less. I, I know players like to celebrate and do those things, and if that's considered fun, fine. But the game itself, I want football. I want hard-nosed, smash-mouth football with decent players. They don't have to be all pro players. I just want to see good football. And I've said it every XFL show that we do. That's all I want from the XFL. And I think the majority of fans, if you tell them, hey, the XFL is going to have good players and good football, people watch. People like football. They'll watch if it's good. But when it starts getting gimmicky and it starts getting, I'm air quoting, fixed, or, hey, this team is going to beat this team, then people are going to tune out. But other than that, you got anything else today for the listeners, youngster? Not today. I'll, I'll wrap it up at that. I see we're at 19 minutes right now. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but, yeah, tune in next week. Again, we'll have that next week's show posted on thegruelingtruth.net. Check us out on Twitter at Youngster Old Man. I'll leave you to say the goodbyes, Troy, but I'm done. We've got a number of stuff to talk about in a 20-minute window for next week's show. Oh, we do. And you know what? If anybody – from the XFL listening to this podcast, here's our request. We would like to have Mr. Oliver Luck join us to talk about his responsibilities and what his vision is for the XFL. The show gets a lot of hits. It does, youngster. So if anybody yeah. from the XFL is listening in, get in touch with us on Twitter at TroyRobert967, at Kid Cunny, our show handle at Youngster Old Man. We would love we would love. I would enjoy that. I would probably be like a little kid at Christmas to be able to talk to Mr. Oliver Luck, the new commissioner of the XFL. Hope you enjoyed the show today, everybody. Kevin and I will get back with you next week. Have a wonderful week.